Thanks everybody for, 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 for voting for my session. I uh, really appreciate that. So I'm Jean-Marc, I'm system engineer for, for Rockus uh, in France. I'm sorry for my voice. I don't know what happened this morning when I woke up, but I just gone. So sorry, I hope you'll be able to hear me well. We're going to talk about the evolution of Wi-Fi beacons. And before starting, I think it's quite important to remind for the non I mean, for the English native speaker, Beacon's word makes sense. But for the other, it couldn't, it might not do. And so it's important to remind that Beacon, basically at, at a very early stage, was just a fire or light that you put on top of something to inform about something. Uh, you want to inform about the dangers, you want to inform about uh, something you want to, to reach. So it used to be used by the navigational things uh, with signal fires and uh, lighthouse in a very long time ago in the past. And with the time we continue to develop the lighthouse, we also find new media to communicate. That's an important point because it's not any more light, it's also about sound. And, um, oh, I was supposed to, okay. Um, and uh, when you have some fogs, you're not able to see the light. And so with the sound, you're able to inform both that the coast is, qu is quite closed. And now, uh, in 20th centuries, we got radio beacons. One of the most famous ones is uh, non-directional beacons, where basically it's antennas that you put everywhere on Earth, and it allows fly, um, airplane, boat, to, to know where they are by just heard, hearing this, uh, those beacons. If we go to more specifically Wi-Fi, I guess everybody here is aware that beacons are sent by APs to clients, except when we are in ABSS. And this is to inform about where service availability and what type of service is provided. At the same time, it also allows you to keep the network synchronized. Or it does do that, it does it by sending beacon every, on a regular period of time, uh, and we got around 585 beacons per, per minute. So it looks like a heartbeat, and I like to name it the heartbeat of the Wi-Fi. And uh, it could look a bit fast, but there is other, other, other animals in the nature that have the same type of orbit. The mouse, I guess the reason why we have the wireless mouse. And also, very important to understand, Beacon doesn't expect any reply, they're just here to inform, provide information, and that's it. To do so, they have a structure from a front perspective that is, like everybody, Makeder, FFCS at the end, and the frame body itself is divided in two parts. The first part is about uh, non-AI information. So always the same, timestamp, beacon intervals, and some capabilities about the, the system. But the most interesting for us here is uh, the information element. Those information elements will be what will be used to send data to client and other, we'll talk about that later on. In each beacon frame, we have many of them. And each of them have an ID, a specific one, a lens, and an information. It's important to remind that information elements might or not be mandatory based on the standard and the radio, and that information elements are not just used for beaconing. It can be used for other from, just to keep that in mind. So if we go back to the early stages of Wi-Fi in 99, we had only seven um, information elements per Wi-Fi. The most known one, of course, is the SID one. And, uh, well, I was supposed to have a loop. No. Okay. Anyway, so I don't know if you can see it well, sorry, I was supposed to be able to loop that. But um, on the button of the, on, the, on the right, you can see that for the ID zero of the beaconing, the, miss, the, the name of this ID is do you see me? And obviously it's the one that you're going to see on your laptop. And if you remove that element ID zero, well, you're going to get an ID network. But I guess everybody knows that. But it's important just to see it, visualize that, to understand how it works. Now, there is also something important about beacon and airtime. If the beacon are the Wi-Fi earthbits, it means it's crucial for Wi-Fi. But it also means that, like for anyone, if you get too much earthbit, you're going to get something wrong. And so it's going to consume airtime, create reduced performing, performance. So as a Wi-Fi designer, you must keep that in mind. Make sure that the number of Wi-Fi remain under control per, per APs. Eventually, increase the beacon modulation and 
why not being able to uh, increase the TBTT so the time for transmitting uh, beacon? Just if you do that, keep in mind that it can have some impact, and you might be aware of them. One of them is, for example, one who works on DFS channels, so from channel, uh, as I forget the name, I was supposed to be able to, to zoom in, sorry for that, 52 to 140, uh, you have to know that stations are not able to probe request on that specific channel because it's DFS. And so if you space more the time in between two uh, beacons, you might also slow down the rooming of some device on those channels. And that's something very important to keep in mind. So from 1999 to 2020, Wi-Fi evolved a lot. You're all aware of that. We got a ton of new features, new services. And by definition, the, wife, the beacon has to inform the device about those evolution. And those go, those go from, to, from the information element. And so I, I read all the, the standard and try to list all the uh, AI existing for, for Beacon. And it goes from seven at the very beginning, as I just said, to 73 today, and four has been removed. So there is a real ton of information now that can be transmitted by Beacons. And Beacons is probably now one of the best ways to quickly qualify, profile a specific Wi-Fi. So I won't go through all of them, but just, just name some of them to, to make you understand and realize what you can find. So uh, in 2007, we got the country information elements, which is number seven, that gives you the country code set on the APs. You got the ERP information that explains that those specific devices will support the 11G um, uh, modulation. You're going to get information about uh, WPA. Uh, do you have WPA, PA2? Is going to be set into the RSN information element. Uh, what about the load? So you're going to get information there too. So you're going to be able to know how many devices are associated to, to your Wi-Fi, to your BCID, sorry, and uh, how many, what is the channel utilization. And lastly, but not last, uh, the vendor specific one. So it's a very important one because beacons start to be very convenient to use, and everyone wants to use it. And the gentleman who creates the standard creates a vendor specific to make sure that if someone wants to put a property information into the system, he will use those specific information elements to make sure it won't destroy the structure of your frame and won't create some disruption into the communication between the station and the access point, vice versa. Um, in 2012, I'm going to go faster here, we get all a information element from HT for 11N, so capabilities and operation. We got the mobility domain, we got the radio resource measurement uh, through the 11 key that start to be available. And we also get this new, new one, the multiple base ID that just go uh, quite unknown at the time and become more and more important today. We're going to talk about, a bit about it later on. In 2016, we got the VHT, and we also got the Reduce Neighbor Report. Again, one thing that was not that known at the time, but it starts to be very used now with Six Gigs. And finally, uh, in 2020, we got uh, nine new ones, including the field syndication. So what is interesting also is that uh, for those who, who saw the numbers I just show uh, for, for different information elements, the ID, I mean, there is one byte to code an element ID. So it means you can go from zero to 255. Zero is uh, the name of the Wi-Fi for, so, for the one who remember what I just said. What is important to say is that since 2016, we already reached the maximum number of of information elements. We go above 255. And now if you want to have a quick look and understand how to differentiate a specific uh, information element, you have to look at a new field, then extension ID. So if you look at here, you'll see that the ID is 255, but the extension ID has been had to be able to differentiate all the information elements using the same ID. All right. Um, just to talk about the vendor-specific information element, that's a very important one. I'm going to take an example. I guess everybody is aware of how it works OWE transition mode. 
And uh, if not, just as a reminder, OWE is a way to encrypt data over the air, but non authenticate the user. It's for, uh, for the guest access of, of hotels, kind of things, but to avoid that, you got a warning saying that the Wi-Fi you're using is not encrypted. All the devices are not compliant with OWE. So uh, we have a way, sorry, I was able to do Zoom initially, but I, yeah, I don't know why it doesn't work anymore. But basically, what we can see on the, on the thing is that uh, we have on the beacon from a way to specify that there is an hidden Wi-Fi name with the same name, but that's going to be OWE. And so the clients that support this model will become connected with a, a secure connection, but the one who don't understand it will keep the, the, the open SID, the standard one. So that's the way this works, and that's very cool. But the thing to, to see here is that this, um, this evolution is not linked to uh, the IEEE. It's something done by the Wi-Fi Alliance. And so to do that, they use the vendor-specific things. And they were able to, as you can see, the vendor-specific here is owned by the Wi-Fi Alliance, that one at least, and he's providing the information. And so we have some features like that that has been implemented by the Wi-Fi Alliance uh, outside the IEEE that, that can, be, can be done this way. And we have the same for OCE and MBO. If you try to enable those features on your Wi-Fi, you'll see that those information are embedded into the vendor-specific information element. All right, so um, about 11EX and B, of course, we also get some other uh, new element information. I won't go through it, but yeah, we have the H, E capability operation, of course, the TWT. And for the B, it's not yet finalized, but uh, we should have five new IE, one for the EHT and uh, one for the, uh, three for the MLO that has been mentioned this morning. Now, what we need to understand is that with 6 gig, we're entering into a new world, a new wide world, requiring new rules. And some adjustment has, can be do, done on the, on the beacon itself. First, for airtime optimization. As I said, beacons can take a lot of airtime if you don't use it properly. So with 6 gig, there is a new way to optimize airtime on the airtime consumed by beacons. The first way is to do uh, is to understand that we don't need any uh, retro compatibility to support all legacy devices. We are in full greenfield, and so we can remove some of the information element. On the right, you'll see a table where I set up a Wi-Fi WP3 uh, with a default setting and zero station. And as you can see, the size of the beacon is act exactly around 500 something for two, four, and fives. And uh, for the six kicks, it's only 405. Five. And it includes two base SID. We're going to talk about that just in a second. But basically, just by doing that, you optimize your network the size of the beacon by 15 to 22%. Also, you don't need to uh, use some legacy modulation rate. And so beacons can be transmitted at higher modulation, uh, sparing some airtime. The new point is the multiple beacons. It's not new, but now it starts to be mandatory. So in six, six gigs, these features, which is part of the 11V, is now mandatory in six gigs. And so what it does is that it uses an information field, the 71, and inside it, you'll be able to see, uh, not, you can see several SID at the same time. And so you can aggregate several beacons at the same time. You could go up to four or five, depends on the size of the beacon, because you have a maximum size for the beacon itself. But you have a way to group several beacons at once to earn a lot of airtime. Oh. Last point from airtime optimization is the preferred scanning route channels. So basically, here I'm mentioning the Unified because we are in Europe, but um, there is uh, one channel of four that's part of the preferred scanning channels, and access points are expected to use those specific channels, and so not borrow the other one with beacons. And the stations are not allowed to send probe requests outside this uh, for these channels, except if they can hear beacons. But basically, if everyone follows the rules, uh, all the beacon and probe requests will be only done on the preferred scanning channels. Then, 
there is some beacon evolution to make the discovery in Sigzig faster. The first one is inbound, meaning that it's an optimization inside the Sigzig Hertz. We already talked about it, that the preferred scanning channels. But it's pretty easy to understand. When you need to communicate with one of your colleagues, you have many tools to do it. You have email, Skype, Teams, etc. You don't know what is the best way to join your colleague. Maybe he's using one or another one. If you skip it, most of them, and just keep one or two, you're going to increase the way you're going to be able to reach your colleagues. On the onbound, meaning outside six gigs, we have the reduced neighbor report that has been mentioned this morning during the, the first session. That is AID 201. And as you can see here, sorry, I was not able to zoom. I expect to do that. But you can see that this specific beacon has been taken from channel 40. And inside it, you can see that the same Wi Fi is broadcasted on channel 69 on 6X and uh, on the same AP. So you have a, an easy way by doing a 5 gigs uh, read of the beacons to identify where is the same Wi Fi in 6 gigahertz. Beacons are not just communicating with station. Beacons are also, can also be used for troubleshooting as an important point. I mean, if beacons are the WN bits, it means that if you listen it carefully, you can understand many things. So you don't need to associate to the Wi-Fi. You don't need to access a, a management interface. You just need a simple tool and do a capture of the, of the beacon and read it with the with Wireshark tools or um, some other tools which are a bit better, like I'm, I'm going to show you in a second. But very easily, very quick, you can get a quick, good vision ID of the status of the Wi-Fi nearby you. So here so is the tools from Adrian, which is a very great tool. And um, the goal is to, you, you're able to select what type of information you want to see on the screen. And you can create some, some specific profile. Where's my mouse? So if you want to check the RF design, for example, you can customize the things, information that you see, and you're going to be able to quickly check how many Wi-Fi is present on the same channels. Are you do using the right channels with? Uh, what about uh, the signal coverage? Um, if you are in uh, I don't I don't environment, by seeing the, the number of stream, you can see if this AP seems to be for I don't see or not. So there is plenty of information that you're able to understand from there. If you look at the Wi-Fi settings, you'll be able to see that um, what type of uh, information um, features has been enabled. If you have some issue with roaming, do you have the 11V key or enabled? If you have some issue with the legacy device, is 11R enabled or not? Because maybe it can impact some legacy device. Uh, what about the modulation? Is that properly set? I mean, did you remove all the 11B modulation to, to, to get something more, more efficient? That's something you can see from there. And from a network load perspective, you can also very quickly see how many devices are connected by access point. You can check how many uh, airtime is consumed uh, on speak channel to see if the system is very loaded or not. And you're going to be able also <coughs> to see if you have some legacy client connected on the Wi-Fi that could slow down everyone. So this is kind of tools that you have on the system uh, that, and that you can very easily understand and, um, and check. And if I go back to my presentation, I will finish by the fact that Beacon can also be used for something else than just communicating with machine. You can use it also to communicate with people by using the specific, uh, the, the proper uh, name of his ID. And here, as you can see, it's named Android WPC 2023. And if you look at your phone, you should see something quite similar right now, broadcasted by the small device just next to me. Because some other did, I had the very last slide on my, on, my, on my deck just to inform you that tomorrow evening we have a great session at the end of the day on the Zurich 3 and 4. We're going to talk about some very nice topic, technical topic. And uh, there will be also three Wi-Fi 6 EEP that you can win uh, in a raffle. So hope you're going to see us, you tomorrow. And uh, thanks for listening to me. Have a great day. <laughs>